for the record. No matter what I say, it's AP09. This is Eric with the McCluskey Arms Company. Today we're going to disassemble a CZ P09 to do an RMR cut and Raptor cuts. It is brand new. Make sure it's unloaded. Remove the magazine. All right, on the CZ P09, you're gonna line up this line with that line on the slide, like that. And then you have to push this takedown pin out and it's pretty stiff. I can't get it with my fingers. So you can, a lot of people use the magazine. I don't do that because if you scratch the magazine, it's a customer's gun. Um, so I just use a pin, push it out. You can also tap it out with a hammer flies across the world, it comes out just like that. Now you're gonna slide the whole slide off the front, make sure that magazine, or excuse me, make sure the recoil spring um, doesn't fly off. Now we're gonna take the recoil spring out, just like most semi-auto pistols. Take the thread protector off if it's a threaded barrel. Set that out of the way. The barrel out. Now we're going to take off the rear sight. You don't have to do this uh, to take apart the rest of the gun, but since we're going to be optic cutting it, we will be taking off the rear sight. So you loosen that set screw there. And then we need to take off the front sight. Alright, it looks like this front sight is a 0.050 or a 50 thousandths Allen key. You don't have to loosen the set screw all the way, just a couple turns. All right, now we're gonna take it to the vise. Hammer and punch. Using this um, plastic tipped aluminum punch from Dawson Precision, comes with a lot of their sights. You can also use just the aluminum punch or just a rod of aluminum. Um, or you can use a steel punch if you're very careful and it doesn't have sharp edges. Um, on this front sight, there is a tritium vial and the glue that holds it in sticks proud. So you don't want to hit that or it'll leave a line through the tritium vial and you don't want to hit the set screw because it'll mess up the threads. So you want to hit right in between the two. If you can with a plastic punch, if not, you can use a steel punch. Just make sure it's not hitting either the tritium or the set screw. And we're going to grab a bench block. This extractor pin right here is gonna come out from the top or down. So you're gonna pound it down from the top to the bottom. And there's a spring underneath this pin here. So make sure you're holding onto that extractor when you take it out. Grab your pin. Leave your punch in, hold your extractor down, pull your punch out. Gently let the spring tension off so it doesn't fly. The extractor has to tilt up like this. Tilt up like this, move forward to clear the channel, and then lift out. There's a uh, boss on the bottom of the extractor that needs to clear before you can pull it out. You can't just pull it out the side here. You have to pull it all the way forward and then out. There's then a spring like that. 
and then a spring guide like that. All right, now we're gonna take out the uh, firing pin retaining pin. Um, try and use the correct size roll um, punch for this because that roll pin, if you use too small of a punch, will um, uncoil. And it's gonna be, well, if you're using the stare at pin punches, they're gonna be not quite long enough to pin, push it out. But before we deal with the fact that the pin isn't all the way out, we're gonna catch the firing pin. It's gonna to wanna to pop out the back here when you pull the pin out. And then uh, you can push the firing pin retaining, uh, the firing pin safety block out down and out of the way. Take the firing pin out, remove the firing pin safety block, and the spring should be stuck in the firing pin safety block. Um, we'll just pull that spring out like that. There's also a firing pin spring. Sometimes it doesn't want to come out. You can reach in with the punch and pull it out of there. Ah. Now we just deal with this roll pin that I don't have a punch long enough for. Narwhals, narwhals, living in the ocean, causing a commotion. All right, so I've taken a uh, hex key, or uh, excuse me, a Torx key that came with some accessory and I cut the L section off of it. So this can now fall all the way through the hole. These are nice to use as kind of sacrificial pins. They're hardened, so they're not gonna bend as easily. You're gonna transfer more force down. You do have to cut them with something like a uh, angle grinder or um, a Dremel cutoff wheel or something like that. But now we can just pound that roll pin all the way up. And that is a strip slide. Take the uh, serial number sticker off here so we can mill it. That is ready for milling. We'll take apart the frame. This gentleman wants the Cajun parts, um, the Cajun upgrade kit put in. We will be doing that um, in a different video, but for today, for today, we're just gonna take apart the frame and show you how it's done, and we'll put it back together in a different video. We're gonna take out the decocker assembly, which runs all the way through here. Pull the hammer back with this finger, push down on the ejector with your thumb, um, and then this flat, this flat here on the decocker uh, needs to be in the neutral position. So the decocker needs to be in that position, which there should be a flat right here that lines up that's parallel with this ledge right here. And then you should be able to slowly pull that whole decocker assembly out. And once it's in this position, you gotta be careful because this spring right there um, wants to come off. So just watch that spring, try and cover it. All right. So now we're gonna let the decocker off and slowly just work that pin out and grab grab this spring with the pliers. The bottom leg of that spring goes way down in here to a roll pin and it actually sets in that roll pin right there. Um, when it's, when we put it back together, that'll be important. So pull it out of there, set that down. Now you can let off the pressure with the hammer um, the other side decocker is just, there's a specific spot in the frame where it's got enough room. So in this position, it has enough room to just slide out like 
that. All right, so we're gonna take this ejector out. Underneath of the ejector is an ejector spring. It likes to fling out. It's gonna try and leave in that direction. So just slowly pull it off. And as you pull it out, you're going to cover it with your finger and try and let the ejector kind of come up like that. See how it's uh, on its way up and out. And then that spring won't fling out if you slowly let the spring tension off. Like now this is the spring right here that likes to fly out, that one. All right, now next we're going to take out the sear pin. Um, we're gonna push it out from the right of the gun to the left of the gun. We're also gonna have to have the hammer back just a hair, like that. The hammer needs to go in just a little bit back just so that it uh, takes the tension off of the sear. All right, now when we pull this pin out, the sear is gonna wanna come out along with the um, firing pin stop activator bar thing. I don't know what that thing's called. All right, so these are the two bases that we're taking out. Um, it is together in this orientation in there. So this is the right side of the gun. And that's the sear position. Underneath the sear should be a spring right here. Pull that spring out gently without losing it. Now we're gonna get the hammer out. Um, the hammer has this funny looking lever that attaches it to the uh, trigger bar. We're going to push the trigger bar down and rotate this lever up. Like that. And when that lever is up, we should be able to push the hammer pin out. So I'm rotating the hammer back just a hair while also pulling up on this connecting lever. We should be able to push it out of there. There we go. That notch is what um, is holding everything in at this point, or when we were pushing out on it, and that notch is um, riding, this lever is riding on that notch in the hammer. So that's why it has to be in a specific position to clear that pin. All right, now we're gonna take the mainspring out. You could take this out um, back when we started. That's probably a good idea. Or you can take it out now, as I am doing. Take this out, you gotta kind of push up on the mainspring housing and push down on the pin. Push the pin out at the same time. Something like that. And that comes out. And your hammer should come out the top. Like that. Now, if you're changing out the hammer, um, you can knock this uh, pin out here, but it is a pretty tight fit and um, staked pressed and you don't want that to be loose because it can jam up your guns. I'm not going to take this customer's uh, pin out here because it can cause malfunctions. Only take that out if you're changing out the hammer and you should replace it with a new one. A new pin. All right, next we're going to get this little spring out that holds up on the trigger bar. It's right here. Um, so you just push it down and it will pop off of the trigger bar and then you pull it straight up. Uh, now let's see, we will take out the trigger return spring um, and the trigger, it's down in here. This really likes to fly, so as you're doing it, cover it. Um, you're going to basically just push on that trigger pin and pull the pin out the other side, like that. 
And now when you pull your pin punch out, make sure to be covering the trigger return spring because it wants to fly out. And we'll just dump that out. There's your trigger and your trigger return spring. Looks something like that. Uh, now we're gonna pound out this uh, roll pin in the frame. That's gonna allow us to take the, uh, the metal part of this frame out. I wouldn't um, take this out under any normal circumstances unless you're trying to paint the gun or if you absolutely wanna clean under it. Hook one of the, one of the holes with a punch and just pull it out of there. Um, there's nothing else in the front or the back, but we are gonna have to take out the um, metal uh, section in the back and the magazine catch still. But while we have this out, there is a pin right here that holds this spring in, and this spring just retains the takedown lever. Uh, so we're just gonna pound that out from, uh, from the outside to the inside. Watch these springs, because sometimes they've got some power behind them, but not always. That little pin is a pain, don't lose it. Um, and we're gonna pull our punch out and hope that that spring doesn't go too far. There we go, covered it up. Dump that out of there, you might need to pry it out with a little pick. Something like that. Um, I don't see a reason why you would ever need to take this out. Um, it's not gonna wear out, it's not gonna break. Um, if you wanna take it out, more power to you. That's how you do it. Um, so that's the front end of that pistol taken apart. Now we're just gonna pound the roll pin out of back end. It's right there. And that will allow us to remove this rear steel section. All right, got that pin out. Now again, we're just gonna pry a little bit, typically not super in there. Again, not sure why you would need to take that out. It's not required for cleaning. It's not required for functionality. It's probably never going to break, but if you need to take it out, that's how you do it. I would recommend not taking these out. Um, there's no reason to. Pounding those roll pins in and out of your frame can cause damage over time. Again, the more times you put a pin in and out of a, a, a tight fitting hole, the looser it's going to get. Um, and the looser it gets, it's gonna start falling out inevitably and um, can cause malfunction. Now, the magazine releases on these are kind of fun. There's this hole on the side and there's this pin right here. This pin is down into the middle of this um, magazine release and there's a detent holding the pin in and that pin holds the magazine release in. So we're gonna push the pin out with a very small punch or preferably a really sharp pick. Um, anything that doesn't get in the way. So I like to use this pick right here um, and push in on the detent. And when you've pushed in on the detent, uh, you're gonna grab the pin. There's a little notch in it with pliers. Needle nose pliers. And uh, that's gonna allow you to pull out this pin. And uh, I like to point it towards myself because if it pops out of the gun, it's gonna at least hit my soft jacket and not roll all around the concrete. At least that's the goal. There we go. Now I'll grab the magazine release out and there's still a detent and spring in there. And that detent, um, when it's in the gun, Ooh, this is a risky one. Gonna try not to spring all this across the room. That's how it sits while it's in the gun. So it's got this detent holding in this groove of this pin, and that allows the whole magazine release to be spring-loaded while still keeping it in the gun. Um, and so when you're pushing it out, you're, you have to push that detent out of the way for the pin to come out. All right, now you can dump that spring out. Sometimes it's hard to get out of there, but sometimes it just falls right out. Um, there's the spring underneath the detent. Just gonna push it all out to the side, like that. <sighs> if you wanna take the grip off the back, that comes off too. There's different sizes of those, as you probably know, it came in your case. It's a completely disassembled CZP09. You probably don't ever need to take it this far apart, but if you want to, that's how you do it. If 
I spring this thing, 